Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In this series, we are learning how to create modern GUI interfaces with Python. So today we are going to learn how to create buttons. So let's get started. In the previous part, we learned how exactly can we set up our project. So we created this Python environment and we had a project called setup within our project folder, Python GUI. We also created this setup project in PyVisual. So today we are going to create a new project by the name button. So we can close this and open up button. So this is the name of our project and as usual, we would like to update it, but we need to give it our auto sync uh, folder. So here, this is the folder that we need to define. So here I will go back to my project and here we are going to set up a new directory and we are going to call it button. So this is basically our new project. So I can right click this and copy path reference and copy the absolute path. And simply, I can open this up and paste it here. And this is our button directory. So I can select this folder. And now we have our button project linked. So this means that if I update this, and if I go back, you will see that we have some files already over here. So what I can do is I can double click this and I can run our project just to make sure that we are headed in the right direction. And there you go, we have our window opened up. So we can stop this and go back. And now let's go ahead and look at buttons. So first we are going to look at the design and then we are going to look at the programming aspect of this. So now, the good thing is that here you have templates of buttons. So most of these buttons uh, you can simply click and you can use. So here you go. Uh, if I click on this, there we have an icon, we have text, we have a background, we have a border. There's a lot of functionality within our button class. So here uh, you can select any one of these and it should work as it is in our uh, project in Python. So if I update this now, and if I go back to our project and if we run it again, and there you go. So we already have these buttons. As you can see, we just dragged and dropped and we added these buttons and they are already there. And the good thing is they have a little bit of animation to them. For example, when you hover over it, the color changes slightly. And then when you click on it, the color changes as well. So these are defaults and uh, they will be available on every button that you use. And even if you use for icons or something like that, uh, it will still work pretty much the same way uh, that we have it working right now. So if I run this now, uh, now we have this Facebook button as well. Now let's look at from the beginning let's look at the very basic button so if i click on this the good thing is that all of our buttons are created from this uh, base class so we can make this button look something like this or we can make this blue button look something uh, like this right so how exactly can we go from here to uh, there that I will show you using settings. So we have lots of different settings that you can use. So for example, if I wanted to make this from this, what I can do, I, I will simply copy this here. And here, what I can do is I can look at the size of this. So we have width and height, and I can change the width and height from here. So I can write here 50 and that it will become 50, right? And then I have the text, I can remove that. And now you can see it's already looking a little bit like that. And then I can change the background color of this. I can add an icon or I can add a text. So for example, I can write T here and increase the size of that. But it's not the same because we are using icons. So again, you can create this stuff very easily uh, using these parameters. So if I remove this and I simply go to icon and select from icons, I can go here and write, for example, text. And there you go. This is our text. And then I can change the color of this. I'm doing this quickly because I just want to demonstrate, but we will go through each uh, property one by one. So here we don't have a corner radius or we have a very small corner radius and there you go. So now you can see it's very similar to our original uh, button, right? And it's very different from the submit button, right? So that's the basic idea that you can add and remove and stuff like that. 
So let's go ahead and look at all the settings that we have so that we deeply understand what exactly, uh, how exactly does this work. So the first thing I mentioned is the width and height. You can change it from here. You can increase the width or height and you can also drag and uh, move it around uh, as you wish. So here you can see now our size is 409 by 178. So I don't like that. So we will undo that and there you go. So then we have submit. So this is the text. So I can write here hello or whatever you want. Uh, you can write that. Then we have the text color. If I click on that, here is the text. I can change the color of that. Uh, let's make it dark blue. There you go. Let's make it a little bit darker. And there you go. So now we have hello uh, with a darker color. Then we have fonts. So here we have lots of different fonts that you can choose from. For example, this. And then right after that, we have our uh, font size. So here you can see we have 32 as our font size and now it's much bigger. Then after that we have font styles. We can make it bold, we can make it italic, we can make it underlined or we can strike through, right? So we, let's make it italic. And then after that we have the button color. So if you wanted to change the button color, you can change it from here. Now if you don't want any color, you can remove the transparency so you can make the transparency zero and now it doesn't have any color you can make it white at the moment because the background is white but uh, what i suggest is you remove uh, the transparency so here we have removed the transparency uh, then we have the corner radius now for corner radius we do need to see this okay so for corner radius you can see here we can move this around and then for padding, this is something that you can use uh, to push it left and right, but I, I don't recommend using this in most cases. So there you go, left, right, bottom, and there you go, you can use those. But again, I, I don't recommend using this unless you know what exactly will happen. Then we have border. Now what we can do is we can remove the transparency of this over here, and we can add a border. Of course, you can keep the color and add a, add a border as well. And then here we have the border color. Let's make it blue, the same blue that we have here. And now you can see it's looking much better. And uh, if you go to the border again, and this this is solid, dotted, dashed. This is experimental. So I, I don't recommend using it as of yet because uh, it's experimental. It, it might not have the same effect in Python what we have here. Okay, so then uh, we have the icon. So if I wanted to add an icon, I can select from the icons here. So I can, for example, add a Bluetooth icon. So it's not showing because the color is white. So we can make it blue and there you go. And we can, of course, pick the color again. I love this color picker thing so that it makes our life so much easier. And then you have the position. You can uh, make it left or right. The icon is shifting. And then you can increase or decrease the icon size, uh, the scale. And then you also have the icon spacing. You can increase and decrease that. So for example, this is our button uh, that we have created. And uh, then you have move back and forth. So which button, let's say if we had two buttons and this button was, let's say, um, red color. Now we can see if we push it back, it goes back. If we push this at front, comes to the front so that's the basic uh, idea of this and then uh, we have our opacity so you can decrease and increase the opacity there you go and then of course you can lock if you lock it then uh, you won't be able to move it so you can move this one but you can't move this one at the moment and uh, then at the very end we have delete of course you can delete we don't want to delete because we want to display <laughs> so Let's update that and we will go back to our uh, PyCharm and here we are going to run this and there you go. So now we have both buttons with the same design and you can see uh, they are working. Now because there is no background color to this, that's why it's not giving an animation effect. But here we have the background color so it's giving us animation effect. Now if you wanted to give animation effect to this, what you can do is you can change the color of this to white and it will give you that animation effect. Instead of making it uh, transparent, you can make it white. In that case, it will be a little bit darker. There you go. So now you have the animation.
So this is all good, but how exactly can we use it in our coding? So let's do one thing. We are going to remove the second button and here we are going to open up on the right hand side we have our uh, logic parameter. So here what I recommend whatever you are changing you should rename it because by default if we go to the code button here so over here we have this code button if you click on that it will open up our code and you can see that in UI uh, page 0 you can see that this is our button code and it names it button underscore 0 so that's not very good name if you are trying to access it you will forget what was the name so for example I can write here hello underscore uh, or I can write button underscore hello right so it's up to you what you want to call it and then we can simply hit update so now we have one button and the name of that button is hello so if we go back to our pie charm now uh, if we run it, it will have just one button and it's hello. Now we want to add logic. So the logic will be in app.py. So here you can see uh, we have our logic code, we have event bindings, and then the main function, uh, which is here. Now we don't need to change anything in the main function. We need to change in event bindings and in the logic code. So in event bindings, we need to tell which button we are pressing and what to do when it pressed. So. In order to do that, uh, you already have access to UI and UI contains all the elements from all the pages. So you can write UI and then inside that you can write page underscore zero. So this is page number zero. By default, we have page number zero, right? So you can also check that by going to the code and here you can see it's page number zero. So this is by default, you will get these names. And then you can write whatever button name that you wrote. So we wrote button underscore hello. So we will say that when this clicks, we need to do something, right? So if we look at the parameters of our code here, you can see we have these properties uh, on hover, on click and on release. We can use these to actually make some changes. So if I go back, and I can write here dot on underscore click and that will give that will allow me to write a function name which will be called when it's clicked so for example I will write here button select so you can name it anything you want and here in the logic part I will write button uh, underscore select and by default all of these functions will return a parameter which is itself. It will re return its instance. So we'll write here instance. Again, you can write anything you want here um, and that should be fine. So we can simply write print uh, button select. There you go. And then if I run it and if I click on this, you will see here it says button clicked. That's how simple it is, right? Same way, what I can do, I can copy this code and I can write here on hover, uh, it should not be capital, on hover and then I can write on release because release is different than clicked. Sometimes we want release, sometimes we want clicked, so based on whatever you require. So we are creating new functions uh, and we will add them here. Okay, we'll format this and here button click, we will make it hover, uh, hover and here button clicked, we will make it button, uh, what was it, release. So here we will write button hover and here we will write release. So if we run this now and if I click, oh, if I hover, you can see it says hover. If I click, it says clicked and release because I click and release at the same time. So if I click, it will say click. If I remove, it says released. So that's the basic idea of how you can do that. And now if you wanted to change the text of the button or if you wanted to change uh, the color of the button, you can do that too. So when the button is clicked, uh, I can say that uh, instance dot. Now, whatever properties that you want to change, you can write here. For example, for the color, if we go back to our main code, 
you can see what exactly is for color. So here we can see all of these parameters, blah, 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 blah. And then here somewhere we are going to find, where is it? Uh, I'm having a hard time. There you go, idle color. So this is the property that we are using. So we can say idle color is something else. Instead of white, we can make it a different color when it's clicked. Similarly, if I wanted to change the text, I can simply write text and I can change that. So uh, for example, I can write here instance dot idle color equals instead of white, we will make it uh, RGB blue, right? So if I run this now, if I click on it, it becomes blue. Uh, similarly, on hover or on release, I can say change the text to uh, something else. Let's say instance dot text equals changed, right? Uh, so that's basic idea. Uh, let's remove this because it's bad color. There you go. Now it becomes changed, right? Because when I released, it became changed. So um, on hover, uh, I can say uh, make the text hover. So all these parameters you can access very easily and you can uh, change them. There you go. It says hover. And if I click, it says changed. We should say it's clicked when it's clicked, right? <laughs> but anyways, that's the basic idea of how you can use buttons in uh, PyVisual and how easily can you create these buttons and it will generate the code for you. And if you want to add more logic to this, uh, I've explained very easily how you can create uh, on click, on hover and on release functions and you can call them and whatever functionality you want, you can add it here. So this is it for today. I hope you have learned something new and in the next part, we'll bring another new element. So till then, goodbye.